Welcome back, Game Maker How to Gun Overheat and Cool Down. This is a part two. Uh, we already made the basic where we can fire. We fire too much, we get a force cool down, and then we can fire again. Now, what we'd said we would do is we're going to add a little bit more to this to make it look a little bit better. So, first thing I'm going to do is make it so that when we have the cool down, the cool down bar is going to change color and it's going to go a lot slower so that there's more of a penalty when you cool down. So let's sneak those two things in there. Now what I'm going to do for this, I'm actually going to go to my global object that I had from the first video, and I'm going to add two more variables here. I'm going to add global dot heat rate, and I'm going to say the global heat rate is 4, and global cool rate, and cool rate of 2. Now what this is going to do is, well you're going to see in a second, Normally my gun, when I was cooling down, I did this here. Global heat is global heat minus 2. I'm just going to replace that with global dot cool rate. And now here's the second thing I'm going to do with it. I know that when the gun's normally cooling down, I can take off 2. But what I want to do is if the gun is in state 2, which remember was the overheated state, I don't want it to cool down as fast. I want it to cool down slower. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask a little question here. I'm going to say if my state is 1, then I can cool down at that rate. Else, if state is 2, global.heat is global.heat minus, and I'm just going to take a fraction of it, 0.25 times global dot cool rate. This way it's going to be way slower when I'm in the overheated state. That's the penalty you pay. Now, let me go use that other variable before I test this out, and that's when I fired. I added 4. Now let's just add global dot heat rate, right? That was the variable 4. This makes it a bit more flexible, so you know if you ever get an upgrade later in the game, you can change this variable and the person's gun won't heat up so much. So let's give this a go. So much slower cooldown after a heat up. And there we go. I'm pressing. I can't fire. I'm paying the price. I wish I hadn't. And then I can fire again. And we're back to the normal cooldown rate in state one. Okay. Let's take care of a warning light. So this changes colors when I'm getting closer. So here we go. In the draw method, sorry, in the draw objects draw event, here I'm just always picking yellow for the draw color of that rectangle. What I'm going to do before here is I'm just going to put a couple ifs here to decide what the color is going to be. So I'm just going to ask a question. I'm going to say if global heat is less than 60, I'm actually going to make a new variable here. For those that don't know this type of variable, it's called local. And when you make a local variable, it basically only lives on this piece of scripting paper. And so the variable's made here, used, thrown away. So that's a good type of variable just to use for what I'm about to do. So I'm going to say, after I make that variable, I'm going to ask if the global heat is less than 60, this color is yellow. Else, if the global heat is less than 80, this color, oops, is going to be orange. Else, pretty well that means I have to be above 80. Else, this color is C, red. Now, we're going to see how this works. And uh, there I already foresee a little problem. But the only thing I have to change is now also, of course, down here. I'm always drawing in yellow. Now I'm going to draw in this color. So after it determines what this color should be, that's the color it's going to draw in. So let's give this a go and pick out the problems. So I start the fire. Let's overheat. It's orange. I go back down to yellow, and then it activates again. 
I'm in the orange. That's not bad. Now it never turned red, right? The problem here is once that bar is under 80, that pretty well means I'm never going to be drawing any red because the value quickly starts to plummet. So this kind of logic here, not quite the best for determining what color I should draw. What I should do is I should tie this color drawing maybe a little closer and involve the state. So the state I'm going to check here is actually I'm going to do one little thing about the red. Basically, I want that bar to be red if they're in state 2. That's that. That bar is going to be red. So here's what I'm going to ask here. I'm actually going to take this code and just move it down a tiny bit. Because since the state variable belongs to the gun, I temporarily have to get into the gun object. So, with gun. Now, the nice thing here, especially if you haven't seen these local variables before, because a lot of tutorials won't cover these local variables, is this local variable isn't affected when I go inside of with statements. So I can still use this color, no problem. So this isn't going to cause any sort of issue. Um, like I'm in the gun, but the gun doesn't have a variable called this color, doesn't matter. Okay, this local variable is free to use anywhere on this page here. Okay, it doesn't matter if I'm inside of widths. So here's what I'll do now. I'm going to say if the global heat is less than 60, yellow. If the global heat is less than 80, orange. And then I'm going to ask just a separate if statement. And the if is going to be if state is 2, this color is red. And that's it. Remember, this is coding in the gun. So the gun's going to say, hey, if my state is 2, the this color variable should be red. It doesn't matter what you set it to here. It's going to be red. And this may not be the greatest in terms of efficiency here, you know, asking questions and rewriting colors but it sort of gives you an idea right of what you can do let's give this one a go we should have a red bar until it cools down so i'm yellow 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 i creep into that range turns orange i get to red it's going to stay red now right states two i'll eventually get back my states one and i'm back to normal firing. Anyways, that's your sort of heat down, cool down part two, just to give you a couple ideas. There's, there's a lot of variety you can do there. Uh, one variety I like that I give my students is I tell them if you cross the 80 mark, that's when the gun starts to overheat. And then if you stay there too long, then you have the emergency cool down. So that's a nice one to do. The other one is when you get into that orange bar, start playing a sound. And so the sound starts playing to warn the person. And of course, when they hit the overheat, you play some cool sounds, right? Freak the player out. Thanks for watching. Hope that gives you some ideas.